Hello everybody, and welcome to the Manitoba High School League of Legends Championship. I'm your host today, Logan, and with me is Mark. And Mark, which two teams are we going to see in the final today? Today in the Manitoba High School Esports Association, we have Grand Park and J.H. Bruns. So these two teams have been playing all day long, but mm -hmm. now they achieved to made it to the finals today. Right now we are in the pick and ban stages yep. for the teams. We just got in there. Um, starting off, we've got an Irelia ban from, I believe that is the uh, JH Brunch signed. Yep. Irelia is a pretty popular uh, versatile pick. Also, Lissandra being banned out from the other team. Sorry, that was JH Brunch that banned that. Yeah, just because of the aftershock effect. Yeah. That's why it's so good. Yes, and then another strong pick, Kaisa. These are all pretty standard meta picks that are up there that definitely need to be either picked or banned. Nunu ban, that's a little bit more interesting. I think just because of Nunu's like clear fast yeah. wave jungle and like the, the ability to gank so early in the game. Yeah. He's got uh, he's got a lot of versatility as well. That's the name of the game recently in the meta is just what picks can you throw out to different areas. Um, a Jax ban coming out to as well. Jax is a very popular pick. Yeah. Also the Riven. The Riven. I expected Riven to be banned this game, <laughs> for sure. The, just because of the, the new Conqueror right, build mm -hmm. and the Wit's End. Just yes. It's like such a popular item. Too right much now. disdain. Nope. Okay, so first pick here, is Sejuani. Now that's most likely going to go in jungle. Uh, I have yet to see if Sejuani being flexed many other spots, so... <laughs> yeah. A very st strong tank jungle. Thresh. Picked. And as well as Zach. Oh, another tank jungler. Okay. I, I've never seen Zach in the meta right now, but okay. like, he has such a hard engage. Yes. With the He's good when you have like the team comm to like uh, coordinate his ultimates and his CC with the uh, team. And then Thresh on top of that is like quite a bit more CC. And then the Tom Kench, a good Thresh counter for bot lane. Yeah, a lot of protection in that yeah. one as well. And then if you get a hyper carry ADC, you pretty much just sit on top of him. Yeah, so far, as we know from the the JH, Brun the JH Bruns team, mm -hmm. that they are are trying to do a hard engage comp. Yeah, right now. they're looking for those picks, and Tom Kench is a really good pick to, you know, kind of counter those, you know, hard engages onto people. And then the Silas pick as well. That's a quite an interesting champion. Brand new, I believe he's the newest one so far. Um, a lot. You can either go to the top lane or yeah. the mid lane. And he's got the ability, his ultimate ability is to steal someone else's ultimate ability. So you can, every game's different when you play him. And then the Sivir locked in. That's the, another hard engaged champion mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of mobility. And also uh, the, the spell shield is very uh, safe against their um, big like CCs like a Sejuani yeah. ult. And with like the Silas pick, they have uh, like almost like the same kind of engage that they have as well. That's true. The the Silas could take away um, a Sivir ult and then um, combine that with the Sejuani and Tom Kench. It's a lot more mo mobility there. And they do ban out the Vayne because the um, Vayne is one of the top yeah. AD carries right now, so just because of the press attack. <laughs> she is able to do in the hyper carry lane. Yeah, and also. Um, Grant Park had not picked an ADC yet, and that was another strong one, so it was definitely worth panning. I don't know if they're going to ban but another ADC, maybe. Okay, the Gangplank. That's kind of a niche pick, but definitely strong if it's used in the right hands. Yeah, and uh, we also forgot to mention that the Grant Park also banned LeBlanc. Yes. So, so they, they, I guess they're trying to counter out the mid lane now. Yes, as well as the mid lane. It's hard to ban all those mid lane champs, but uh, you can definitely try. And then the Kale to finish that out is another strong pick. Like, if you get Kale's later. been tearing up in the ranked divisions. <laughs> yeah. So they did take out the Lakeum as well. Mm-hmm. So now, now we just have most to likely see a uh, top lane or mid pick here. I would imagine they could flex either or with a nice pick. Oh, Rise. It's an interesting one. It's very good against Silas because um, of the reason that uh, Rise's ultimate isn't exactly that strong. So uh, Silas loses the ability to really uh, like steal a lot of power from someone if it's Rise. That's true. Also, we also have to mention that Rise is also a Lightning carry. Alone. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. have a lot of catch out with Rise. They do. Well. They have a plenty of CC with that team comp already. And Tristana being picked up by Grant Park. That's a, a decently safe ADC to comp with uh, the Tom Kench. Yeah. You're probably not going to catch him out. But if you do, uh, Tom Kench will save him anyway. <laughs> And then a Gnar picked. Uh, another, that's a safe uh, blind pick for top lane. Uh, we don't know what the, they have right now, so 
Nar is definitely safe, and as well it fits the uh, in whole engage. Yeah. This might also be a rise flex pick. Just That's true. If rise can go top mm -hmm. lane or lane. So, will they want to counter the Silas we'll or see. the Nar? We'll see what the last pick here is. Mm. Really festering on that one, and it's the Yasuo. Woo! Solo Q hero. Okay, and then we're getting some swaps here. Rise will be going mid, and Yasuo will be going top. Against them, of course. This is going to be a very like interesting top lane matchup. Mm hmm. I think um, if Yasuo can get a lead, it will be very hard for Nar. Yeah. Um, but Nar uh, in this lane should just be playing safe and not giving Yasuo that lead. Yeah, and maybe just poking him out with a mini Nar. Mm hmm. Absolutely. I think it, like with the uh, Sejuani and the Yasuo. Like in different teams, it's gonna be like a very hard engage. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a very like fast paced like game, team fight. Well, both teams here have abilities to completely nullify others' engage. Yep. You've got the Sejuani ult throw into the Yasuo, could just win wallet. And then yep. you've got the Thresh hook maybe onto the Tristana, Which and then Tom Kench Tom just Kench. eats him. Yep. So there's a lot of engage and counter engage. It's gonna be uh, just people looking for picks, I would imagine. And, yeah. Um, I Both. Think, I think it mostly will be in the jungle lane. Mm -hmm. That's what, where it's going to be That's like true. a big difference. So there, there, we're going to be waiting here for the spectator delay just because uh, uh, it, we could be technically cheating for the other team if we were working with them, but we are not. So, <laughs> um, But we got to bear through it anyway. We can talk a bit more about the matchups. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this, like, usually Tom Kench's use goes to Spellbook by, build mm -hmm. or Rune Page? That's true. Runes could be, play a different factor here. We could see maybe, like, the um, uh, Frozen Rise Rune, where you go the Glacial Augment into yeah. the GLP. A lot of crowd control and very, uh, very hard to get away from. Also, with, like, with like I feel like the, the jungling lane is going to be the most priority. Mm -hmm. Because once, like, let's say a Sejuani or a Zac gets like ahead in the lane, mm -hmm. then there is gonna be really hard to kill. Both of these team comps actually look very similar to each other. Yeah. Um, a little less engage, I would say, for the. Uh, well, I guess I don't know. I was gonna say a little less engage for Grant Park, but they have the Nar and the Sejuani, and yeah. then JH uh, Bruns have Zac and Thresh for engage. Yeah. So it's pretty even actually. Also, the Yasuo rather went ignite rather than teleport, mm -hmm. so he's looking for the kills. And he's going him. aggressive as well as Thresh. Actually, is taking ignite instead of exhaust, which could be. I don't know if you would want to do that against that comp because, like, uh, it's, it's there's not much kill pressure with a Sivir, um, and then like on top of the fact that you're against the Tom Kench, but you never know. They could get a nice early Zack gank and uh, that's true. Push the well. lead, but we'll have to see if they uh, actually do that. So rise is also so both lanes are running teleport, so mm -hmm. you know they're gonna be. Well, I feel like the rise is gonna be more of a team player, mm -hmm. just because of his ultimate and the teleport as well. Well, I'm trying to think here. Um, there could be some, like I could I could see some interesting Silas team fights as well. Yeah. Like you could steal the Yasuo ult, and then off of a Nar ult, you could get a five man Yasuo ult, which could, you know, be pretty big. But yeah. Um, uh, there could also be like a like I said earlier the Sivir ult, uh, which just enhances your Sejuani's and Tom Kench's yeah. ability to get in there. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely have to see how well they uh, perform with uh, the resources given to them. I feel like the Silas will pr probably prioritize the Sivir and the Yasuo. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, the Thresh one could be situational, but mostly probably looking at Yasuo or Sivir. But yeah. In, in general, though, there isn't that much for Silas to steal this game. No. Rise, he doesn't get much value out of. Zac, not very much value, unless you're like looking to make the big plays. Uh, and then Thresh, not crazy valuable as well. Yeah, like I, with the Zac ultimate, you have to engage first. Mm -hmm. So like with the Silas, he can engage, but like he's not going to be the very most tankiest person in the game. Mm -hmm. So we're just about to head in here. We're going to get the reloading screen. We're going to be able to see some more runes, maybe some skins as well. You never know, but uh, we'll just uh, wait and see how this will pan out. Yeah. So, it looks like, as far as runes go, both Conquerors on the top lane, Aftershock, as well as... Be both of those runes are very strong. Yeah. <laughs> right now, yeah. You could definitely uh, f 
flex those around. Um, the Silas is actually going for Aftershock as well, which could mean he go for a tankier build. Yeah, that is also true. But the most interesting interesting is that Sever went fleet footwork, which mm. means he's gonna be she's gonna be in lane for a while longer. Yeah, that's true. A lot more sustain there. Whereas the uh, Tristana went pressed attack, so she's gonna be looking for more engage as well. Well, I mean, looking at uh, that team comp, uh, the if Silas intends to go a bit more of an off tank build, yeah, Tristana is pretty much your only damage source aside from maybe Nar. Um, all as well as mini, mini Nar. Yeah. But um, but I mean Silas still does damage, so I yeah. don't think that'll be that much of an issue. Um, I believe. Um, I believe these matchups are going to be pretty even. I'm thinking bot lane is going to be kind of a snooze fest. I feel like maybe yeah. nothing's going to happen unless jungle assistance is there. Yeah. I feel like top lane is probably going to be a little bit more exciting. Mid lane is going to be try and prioritize the control. So yeah. And we are in game right now. We are in game. We just popped in here. It's gonna be JH Bruns on the red side, I believe. Uh, yep, JH Bruns on the red side, and the blue side will be Grand Park. Grand Park, right on. Just loading up here, both sides. Uh, probably raring to go. Also, As... we just forgot to mention that the Tom Kench went guarded allies. So he's oh gonna, yes, that's gonna be a lot more protection for the Tristana. Mm -hmm. That lane is gonna be even more safe, as if it wasn't already. Okay, and we're in the game. Everyone spawned in, uh, looking to make some first picks here. And we see that, as far as items go, uh, Silas opened a, uh, sorry, a corrupting potion. Yep. Which is. Uh, oh. Oh, maybe some level 1 action here. Just figuring out where they are. <laughs> Cause they, since they are all engaged, I feel like if... Uh, J.H. Bruns wanted to engage, they could with a Thresh Alt. With a Thresh Hook. That's what th I think they're looking for. Mm hmm I think, yeah, they're just maybe seeing if they could catch someone trying to be a bit greedy early on. Yeah. Maybe getting some early vision. Uh, but both teams looking to play safe, not extend uh, too far out of their comfort zone. Yeah. The minions are spawning in here, and we should see them head their way towards the lane in a moment. Look. Playing some early ward in the... Mm-hmm. There is a, yeah, Thresh placed a nice ward in the river there. Um, little... Finally getting into the mode. It looks like they're actually going for a lane swap here. Um, Yasuo has headed mid. And uh, he's going to lane against the Silas to start off. I guess maybe um, hoping that he can get maybe an early kill on him. Yeah. Um, and then they can swap after. You know, Ryze needs a bit more farm as a champion. So he's uh, probably hoping that he can, you know, play a bit safer with uh, the Nar instead of the... Uh, the, the uh, Silas. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting lane now. Just because Silas ran teleport, so he's not really uh, going to try to kill him. He's yeah. Gonna, he's trying to like, out-farm him. And... As well as the Aftershock, he doesn't have much more burst. Oh, a little yeah, a little, little, uh, little trade. Never hurts. So Zizwani so went straight to her blue buff. He's going to the top scuttle, and Zach will start in the bottom scuttle as well. Yeah. You gotta get those vision controls, it's always, uh, always helpful. There's a little bit of a skirmish going on bot lane as well. This Tom Kench seems to be chunked quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Maybe he's being a little too over aggressive with his, uh. Oh, the game oh, has been paused. Game's pause, we're probably dealing with uh, a little bit of lag issues, I believe. Um, it happens. I mean, yeah. we are working with the uh, internet, which is <laughs> something that can be. Uh, Really good or really bad? League of Legends. Yeah. It might be just be a League of Legends thing as well. Yeah. Now I'm just see here. Should be unpausing it in a moment here, I believe. Uh... So the yeah. reason why the Tom Kench is so low right now is because he went for his W instead of his E. Oh, I see. Yeah. If he went for his E, then we'd have a little bit more health. Oh, a little engage in the mid fight. Oh yeah. I 
think Silas actually used his W on the minion there. Oh, okay. oh and we're getting a bit of a freeze up here. Oh, it looks to be back to normal. Yep. Okay, and then uh, Silas did run the Corrupting oh. po Potion as well, so we do get a... Oh, we have a little engage in the mid lane. Yeah, Zach tried to go for a little play here. Doesn't actually get it. Silas goes back in. Doesn't really find too much. Sejuani is there as well, and she engages onto the Zach. Maybe hoping to get a passive here. Definitely looking that way. Oh, and they actually burn the Silas Flash for the Zach Flash. I don't know if Yasuo will be that fine here, because it looks like he might actually go back in. Oh, Zach goes back in as well, and this is a very close fight. First Blood does go over to Sejuani, but Zach does get his trade back as well, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able oh, to hold on to his life. And, and it looks like they try to teleport onto the Zach blob, but it doesn't actually get onto the blob, but oh, Silas is still alive, and the, the Rise whittling him down finally in a net gain for J.H. Bruns. So the reason why they teleported on the blob is because the, if you teleport on the blob, it actually saves Zach. So that was mm -hmm. a good play by Jay. Very good play, and uh, they end up with a slight gold advantage that way because uh, Zach got, uh, or sorry, Sejuani got first blood, but Zach got the kill right after, and then Rise finished off uh, Silas. So yeah, uh, I mean, trading back and forth, that was technically better for JH Bruns, but both teams did get something out of it, yep. and we'll see if maybe Sejuani could do something a little bit more with that first blood gold, and... Uh, maybe snowball the rest of the map a little bit. But now the Yasuo is in the top lane now. Yeah, so they do go back to the uh, the original lane. <laughs> Yasuo did have an assist from that, so he um, he does get a bit of gold. Yeah. But uh, Nar has not died yet, so he's gotten to stay in lane a bit more and uh, farm up. So far in the bot lane, it's pretty, it's gonna just be a farm fest. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I figured it would. Yeah. <laughs> but Tristana has has popped her potion, so I was expecting that just because uh Sever went fleet foot work, so she is gonna be staying in lane longer than Tristana is. It looks like uh Sejuani's going for a gank top here. Uh Ryze doesn't really seem to be in a position to be caught out though, so they just back off and the reset. Zack is close by though, so there could be some kind of counter engage going on. But it looks like we're getting close to the moment where everyone gets their ultimate ability. Uh, Yasuo did stay mid. Sejuani is actually coming mid as well. Oh, and here's a gauge onto the Yasuo. It doesn't get too much as Yasuo just kind of dashes through, and Sejuani actually loses a bit more health than she thought she would. Yeah, Yasuo is going to be a very hard, hard lane to gank just yeah. because of all the dashes he can do. Definitely. Oh, a little trade, a little trade there, yep. Yeah, nothing too big. As uh, we keep on. Keep on looking through these uh, lanes, nothing too exciting happening other than that first gank mid. That was pretty intense, yeah. very close match. But yeah, uh, so far we did predict that the jungle would be a big influence into whether or not people will be actually doing uh, well. Oh, and a nice play by Nar there to pop off of the siege minion. Doesn't actually get him much though, because Ryze can just disengage. <laughs> we also have to realize that Nar still has a teleport, so if they were mm. going to fight in the, dr the dragon pit, they mm. actually have a... That's true. Um, oh, and then Silas does take the Yasu ult here. And if Sejuani could get the knock up on him, that would be a free ultimate, but Yasu just gets away with uh, a little bit of a scratch. Yep. Zach is actually setting up for maybe a bot lane gank here. But he is going to spot out yeah, the ward. He does find the ward, which is a good ward. That was a well placed. Uh, I, didn't, I guess Thresh didn't see it. And it looks like uh, Silas is still fighting with the Yasuo. Yasuo does ignite him. This oh, is yeah. looking like it's going to be uh, maybe a kill for... It's going to be either a kill for Silas or Yasuo here. Oh, and then the Yasuo the goes alt. That's the Silas ult on the Yasuo ult, I should yep. say. <laughs> Too many ults. Yep, so the junglers are trying to match each other in the jungle, trying yeah. to find each other. But it's really hard to point point where they're going to be. Just yeah. because Zach can move so freely and he's wanting it. He's like a very like CC type champion. Yeah, they're both they're both high mobile like uh, tanks, which is very dangerous in the jungle. Yeah. When you have team communication at least. So Silas does pick up a, a kill there and that's actually Yasuo's second death. So yeah. So that's gonna be a, playing a big role into the game. So I guess to play a little, maybe a little bit more safer now. And mm -hmm. But I, I think Yasuo uh, doesn't have to worry too much as he's a bit more catered towards late game. He hasn't really finished much items. Once he gets that going, he should be fine. 
but we'll have to see if that does actually play into his favor. If, uh, Sejuani can uh, keep on hammering him down, because that is a strategy in itself, is to just focus the one player that you've already killed a yep. bunch of times. So we're going to look at it. The Nar is actually winning lane over the Rise, because he's over uh, 20 CS in the Yeah, so technically. That, <laughs> Nar has not left lane yet. He hasn't even used his potion. Oh, and there's a... They're trying to do it again. They're trying to do the same strategy they did last time, bot here. Doesn't look like it's gonna go over. I don't uh, know if they I don't, want it. Yeah, I don't know if they want to dive this either. This Tom Kench is kind of anti-dive, but the Zac might just wait this out and see if they push this a little too further than they should. Uh, and it looks like looks like Zac gets an engage onto the the Tom Kench. Tom Kench is actually way too deep. He's not gonna look like he's gonna get out of there. Uh, Tristana tried to save him, but Tristana did get out, so nothing uh, too bad there. The but server, a good... They're probably just going to probably go for a plate right now, which mm -hmm. is going to be a huge Good advantage. chunk of gold there. Oh, but well, here comes Silas. There's a for... Nar using his teleport top as well while this is happening. And uh, Silas did steal these Zac ults, so we could see an interesting... Oh, and he actually mistimed that, I believe, and just meant to click it. But they did get the kill onto the Zac there, so they trade that right back. Probably looking to get the kill on the Thresh as well, and Silas gets that. Oh, and then actually the Sivir may be a little too far up. And that's as... a double kill for Silas. Double kill. Okay, so uh, JH Bruns fired back from the, <laughs> the gank mid, and then uh, Grand Park was like, okay, we'll do that too. So now, now Silas is, has a 300 gold advantage over mm -hmm. Rise, I believe. But the Sejuani is the, probably the biggest out, the biggest thing in this thug. Yeah, in she's part. she's uh, been playing the biggest role, I believe. Yeah. She's been helping her team get the lead, especially Silas, obviously, because he's got the prior most of the kills. Rise is pretty low on mana here. I don't know if he'll be able oh. to help this Thresh too much. And here comes. The Oh, I think he's just trying to scare him. Yeah, he might be just scared him. <laughs> so Nar took down three, two plates for the Grand Park. So okay. That's going to be a, probably play a big role in playing line break priority. And awesome. Now, yeah. And now we're looking at... Nar still has the most CS. Uh, but Yasuo is actually catching back up now. So because he, he's uh, kind of lost a bit of his lead with the whole... Uh, getting ganked, and the uh, blue team does pick up the Ocean Draken. So that's going to give him a lot more sustain throughout the lane here. And it looks like uh, there might be a gank going on here. And here comes the Thresh Lantern. And the Thresh Lantern just gets you right out of there. Yep. And a bit of an ADC off bot lane while that's happening. So Silver's gonna probably gonna go for Essence Weaver first, just because she burned so many mana for those boomer. Yeah. Oh, and this actually is getting to be a, quite the close 1v1, as there's also a 1v1 happening mid lane again. Oh, and then Yasuo gets knocked up by Sejuani, and Silas can get a free ulti off of that, as well as uh, getting the kill. And then Tristana jumps in maybe a little too close to them. Yeah, I, I think she, tried, she was trying to be a little aggressive. But yeah. Didn't pan out, I guess, the way she intended. Yeah, because Tom can't use his uh, uh to, yes to eat the thresh, but like he didn't have enough to save. It was on cooldown. Yeah, they do get a turret plate as well there, so a bit of gold uh, brought back to their side. As this game is still quite close, so and a good play by Nar here to get the the hop stun into the ultimate. Uh, Sejuani is also in very close as well, and this is probably going to be a kill. And it looks like it is. Maybe Nar. Oh, oh, Nar doesn't quite make it out with his life. That was very worth it. Very, yeah, very worth it. Yeah, I'm not sure if Nar needed to dive there because Sijuani did get the kill, but um, definitely uh, taking one for the team, as you'd say. Oh, and we got a little play going on here as uh, Zach and Yasuo jump onto the Sijuani. Sijuani might not get out of here. Oh, and then oh. the Q right over the wall and smiting just to get you the little health back. Oh, very close, very close by the uh, GH Bruns here, but not quite. Oh, re-engage here by Zack. He's actually getting her quite low. And that's actually a kill for the Zack, and he gets out with the Lantern. Yeah, also the shutdown. Well played, uh, well played, yeah. That was a 400, 400 gold shutdown, so that's mm -hmm. going to play a big role into the uh, And yeah, we actually uh, will have a Sejuani down for about 15 more seconds, so they could go for a play here. It looks like mid lane. 
is a bit more, <laughs> a bit more fun happening. Not much, not much though. As Silas is using his uh, just immense scores of pressure mechanic, and he does actually steal the uh, threshold. Use it for a bit of uh, zoning as they push up the mid wave because they kind of want to get some turret damage here, if possible. So Grand Park is playing a pretty good game right now about like prioritizing objectives. Because right now, J.H. Brennan has one tur one plate and two turrets with three plates, whereas Grand Park has four turrets with four plate, two turrets with four plates, yeah. and one turret with five plates. So that's like a very incremental amount of the world. Yeah, and that's uh, and like it said just now, the turret plating will be falling soon, so that's gold uh, essentially going out in the garbage. But um, they will still make some of it back when they actually destroy the turret. A lot of that uh, turret plate was from the NAR, um, just being top lane 90% of the game so far and just getting some good damage onto that turret. Yeah, NAR is NAR's really engaging onto the rise and he's actually going to get quite a bit of damage here as NAR actually intends to keep following up and he misses his Q, but he does force the rise to ult. So, And there's actually looking like there's a fight going on mid lane here. But uh, Tom Kench saved him. Tom Kench saved him. Zack comes back in. There's a nice slam. Everyone's using their ultimates. No one's getting really close, and a good ult by Yasuo there off of the Zack ult, but uh, Silas is getting low. He got ignited, so he couldn't heal as much. Zack goes right back in. They get the kill onto the Silas. Yasuo with a double kill. Well done by Yasuo to get himself back in this game, and that's just what he needed. Also, top priority. Took down the first tower Grand Park. Grand Park. Zack going back in. He's got that revive passive, so he can uh, just kind of do that without fear. They might actually get the first turret here. Actually, Nar got that. I should just, <laughs> I should say that. Why wouldn't Nar get that? Yeah. They do get the turret back though, and that's a good turret to get opening up mid lane. Um, you do get quite a bit more map freedom when you uh, don't have to worry about being pushed up too far. You can start warding the jungle. Yeah, but I think JH Brun got more of out of it just yeah. because they got two kills and the turret. Well, the gold, as you can see, the gold differential is almost evened up now. There's just a, like a 0.4k difference almost. And uh, the kills across the board are the same, turrets across the board are the same. Only advantage uh, over to Grant Park would be that they have the Ocean Dragon, so they can stay in lane longer. Yeah, Mountain Dragon has actually spawned already, and it looks like they're trying to get some vision control already. Um, Thresh is coming around here, maybe looking for a play. Uh, not doing too much though, as he just kind of can't land anything at the moment. But uh, Grand Park will get the Tristana bomb onto that turret, does quite a bit of damage. Good disengage with Sidwani there, but then Zack flashes in. Thresh tried to get the Tristana, but there's a big Rise ult there to get everyone out. That was a nice place by the Rise. Yeah. But now I feel like the, the JH Bruns is going to be looking for the Dragon player right now. Um, they definitely want to try and maybe clear some vision, maybe look for a pick here later on. And there's a bit more vision control being done. They actually start the Dragon here, JH Bruns. Uh, they're just trying to whittle it down, maybe. We still have the Sejuani all. Yeah, and then Zack actually went in to try and... <laughs> oh, and then Lanza takes it. The lantern saved them back out. Uh, there's kind of a missed time here on the the Yasu ult. But oh, the Nar, the big Nar ult there, get, stunning three of them into the wall, and that's a double kill for the Tristana, maybe even a triple. That's third one going over to Nar, but that was a huge play by Nar there to bring them back over to that team fight. The dragon did go over to uh, JH Bruns, but Grand Park did get the the ace essentially. <laughs> Jade runs a little bit too greedy on that fight. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't really, they wanted, the, they got the dragon, they used all their ultis not very smartly there. Yeah. Um, and then they uh, should have just got out, but a little bit too greedy, not too bad though, because they did get the dragon, and that mountain dragon will help them later on when they're looking to, for Baron yeah. and uh, more, uh, more turrets. turrets, yeah. Sejuani is going to try to kill them with Terra, which will play a big role into what I feel like the role is to play the objective game right now. Yeah. And you definitely want to take that off the map right now, while uh, Grand Park uh, didn't use their uh, Mountain Drake to take it. And Nar is actually disengaging for the Tristana here, saying, Save yourself, I'll, I'll be fine, I'm just 1v5ing, and he doesn't actually end up 
trading one for one there, but he definitely saved his Tristana, and they also grabbed the uh, Void Herald as well, so maybe looking to use that soon. They did open up the mid lane quite a bit, so there is no more turrets there, so maybe if they can get that pushed up, they can uh, perhaps grab an inhibitor, but we'll have to see how Sejuani will use that, because it is the Sejuani holding onto that right now. And we have to also realize that we have to realize that the Sivir went for Mercury's instead of Berserker's Weaves. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. A um, little scared of the CC. I mean, why wouldn't you be uh, when there's characters like Sejuani there? It's hard to hard yeah. to just avoid the CC when it's targeted at you. And Sejuani is heading down mid here. I'm not sure if that means uh, she's going to place the Herald, but it doesn't look like it as she goes into the jungle. And everyone's converging back into mid lane. That seems to be everyone's favorite place at the moment. And just both teams just look to push out the lanes and get some ward. ward yeah, control. get some vision in there. There are three vision wards placed for uh, JH Bruns. They're using that very well. It's only allowed one per player, so you can only have a maximum of five, and having three is definitely good. And they actually may catch out the Thresh here. He's in a very bad spot. He gets stunned up. Tom Kench does eat him, so it looks like Thresh isn't going to last. Silas is picking up that kill. It's a bit of a team fight here. Zach with a big ult to take a bunch out of the fight while uh, Tristana does back off. Uh, this fight is still going on, though, as they're just looking to retreat, and Sivir does make her way out uh, virtually unharmed. So just the one for none there. A lot of ults going through, though. The Ryze ult has been playing a pretty big role yeah. in this game. They were probably gotten more kills if the Ryze wasn't. This is very true. Yeah. The Ryze and Zack are both uh, good for disengaging those big uh, team fight battles. And we do get the Void Herald summoned by Sejuani here, probably taking this down in one fell swoop. <laughs> and they look to just. Uh, keep pushing. Yep, to just keep on uh, looking for this. Uh, these turrets. Big. Oh, good play by Sejuani there to actually knock the Zac out of his jump. And they pick up the kill onto him, looking to maybe finish off the rest as Nar and Sejuani and Tom Kench are all deep into the enemy zone. Tom Kench is taking turret aggro. He's actually 1v1ing the uh, Sivir right now. Tristana does pick up the kill, and Nar is fighting <laughs> Rise in his base. There's a bunch of kills going over uh, to. Grant Park, I should say, not JH Bruns. So that's the first inhibitor down for Grant Park. So now the bot lane is wide open for the minions to push. Yeah. So now they can focus on like the top lane or the mid lane. Yeah, and then also looking at maybe Baron control here, because when you have to look after your bot lane like that, you're not gonna be. Uh, and they only have the one teleport from the rise as well, which isn't exactly a big flanker. So you could have the Gnar on this team, split pushing, and then just uh, force a Baron fight, uh, essentially giving you the end. So far, Grand Park is ahead by 6 kills and 6 gold, and here comes an engage in the mid lane. Silas is <laughs> finding himself in a sticky situation. He does actually manage to get kicked out by the Rise ult, but uh, Yasuo makes quick work of him as they pick that kill back. And Yasuo is close to uh, reaching his core items here. Only one item away from his uh, Eye Infinity Edge, which will give him much more damage. So far it's been like pretty much like normal builds where you see the champions. Nothing too yeah, crazy right nothing now. too crazy. I think this first game people wanted to test the waters a bit more safe. Um, we might see a bit different picks, a bit different bands next game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so far, um, not not a crazy skill gap between these two teams. There's only been those little things. I think mostly Sejuani on the Grant Park side has been making um, it just look easy to, to get all these free kills and these free uh, objectives. And they do actually pick up the Air Drake here, I should say, which will give them a lot more movement speed. Just more roaming, more being around the map. Yeah. Not a bad thing, definitely. And look to maybe group up mid here as they got the side lane pushing as well. Oh, Yasu actually goes in on that. Uh, tries to kill the Tristan off, but then he gets ulted away and Sifwani uh, is actually on the killing spree now as she takes him out. So and that's... Far, so far, Sifwani is the biggest player right now in the mm -hmm. ground part. Absolutely. 
and they're looking to crash into the face at this point. Um, I don't think that Jage Bruns really has the answer here as their Yasuo had gotten taken away. And Zack tries to pick up the Silas and bring him back, but Silas just zonias his away. And then uh, Tristana ending up very low though. And Zack maybe trying to finish her off, but he doesn't look like he can grab it. His passive is still available though. Nar with another huge ulti. Uh, does get taken down by Sivir though, and then Thresh following shortly, as well as Zack. Both the Silas. And they grab the in middle inhibitor, and we're uh, looking at a very, very close to the end game. I think they're, they're, they're trying to go for the Baron play just because mm -hmm. they have no jungler right now. They want to force it uh, just to get as much. They can't really contest Jage Friends because they have to protect their base at the moment, so. I mean, you could see a lucky steal here from some character, but you never know. And Zack did just spawn though, so... Um, and it looks like uh, Grand Park is just baiting it at this point, because I believe they don't, they're not trying to go for it at the moment, unless they're uh, just setting up their vision at this point, which is very possible as well. Yeah, as well as... Just try and get some vision on to them. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be really hard for them to actually try to go for Baron, because they have two open lanes open right now. And they do look like they're catching out the Thresh here. He's, uh... Oh, and a very good Rise ult to actually barely get him out there. Very well yeah. played. Yeah, th this Rise this rise player is actually playing super well right now. He's been taking his team so much. Yeah, that is definitely showing off the utility of the Rise ult at its finest. And, uh, Grand Park is finishing off this Baron here. They actually got it quite low already. Thresh, uh, getting a little too close, maybe, as he gets taken down as well. As it looks like the Baron is also going over to Grand Park, so that might be the final push we see here from Grand Park as they um, mostly head over towards top lane to get that final uh, inner turret, or I should say base turret. Now they're now they're going to try. I think they're going to try and go for a top lane since they have both both lanes. Yeah. Open. And Jage Bruns grasping for something at this point. Um, the Zac trying to make some flank plays work. It's hard because he just gets cancelled by the Sichuani every time and he can't really get in there as well without flashing. And uh, Yasuo needs to maybe get some big ultimate off as well, but this is all big ifs. I, I don't know how much they can do with this Baron buff and they just they take the, the turret out and the inhibitor is soon to fall. Oh, and there's this like, yeah, exactly what I was talking about. Zack can't get in there without uh, just getting smashed. And then the Nar gets in there freely, takes out the Sivir. Uh, Yasuo soon follows, as well as Tristana getting very low. And actually, the turret is damaging Nar a lot, but Nar uses his Zonius. Uh, Silas is also very low, and this is just everyone being very low. The Tomcan saves the Silas, and then the Sejuani finishes off the last two members of the team. That was a very close fight, and it looks like it is GG for Grant Park. They take this game one. Uh, very well played by everyone there. Um, I believe both sides played decently well. I would like to see a bit more out of uh, uh, J.H. Bruns' top laner. Um, not the greatest score, but you know, uh, Yasuo is kind of a feast or famine champion, so it's harder to, to get ahead when you and you, you're getting camped by a Sejuani. Yeah, I think the mo main thing that Grand Park did so well was that they re utilized their jungler so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they definitely... Um, Sejuani was just all over the map, really yeah. showing her presence. There wasn't uh, much, like, other than just warding everywhere. You can't really prevent that. Yeah. Um, there's just too much CC when you're, you've got a Silas on top of you and a Sejuani too, and then... Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, unless, unless you run Cleanse maybe next time, that would probably maybe uh, been a bit of a safer uh, option, but um, well played by both teams. Actually, Sejuani had the best KDA that game too, with yeah. uh, 9 kills, 2 deaths, and 12 assists. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and he's, she's like not really want to get the kill, <laughs> yeah. but she, like, it's still going to be it's worthwhile. It's still effective because they do yeah. get the, the, the gold value there from just killing people and then getting turrets. Yeah, I think they may, maybe Jage Brunt might ban the Sejuani next game, or yeah, or pick we could see that. Yeah, or pick someone that's like actually like can disengage the Sejuani mm -hmm. more, or someone who's like more of a tank fighter, like a, a Trundle or yeah. a Master Yi, 
we could see. Master Chief, maybe not so much. Yeah. He's not the not maybe, the most team friendly team maybe, <laughs> character, but because like they did pick this as Johnny first, so I was hoping mm -hmm. like that's that true. Chase Bruns maybe would counterpick that. That's more. true. Um, they just tried their own tank jungler and yeah. didn't work out as they planned. But I'm sure they've got some other strategies in the in the back of their heads here for this next game. Maybe um, Morgana support. Okay. Morgana definitely could be. Uh, I would say that would <laughs> counter their entire team, as yeah. the CC aspect was the reason why the the Yesu was getting caught out so much. And yeah, um, we could see that pick the Morgana. That is a very good pick against Tom Kench as well. If this uh, support does decide to go with Tom Kench again, which I think was just more like a counter pick to the Thresh in a way, but yeah, um, we'll have to see. So probably Grand Park. Grand Park was playing such a good game. Like mm -hmm. they were getting objectives. They're team fighting so well and disengaging really well. Very well. Uh, really got to give props to the jungler again. Like that's yeah. it was mostly like Nar did very well as well. They had some fantastic alts. Um, bot lane did their job. They stayed alive, and Silas got some early kills to snowball him into yeah. the game. And they yeah they took it from there. Um, I I got to give props as well to. Uh, J.H. Bruns is mid laner with Rise. Yeah. Uh, some of the best alts I've seen on a Rise, actually. Um, very utility based, very team um, based champion. And he saved his team more than once and also disengaged the other team more than once. Yeah. But yeah, I think we'll have to look at maybe a different jungle pick. Because um, the Zac wasn't as effective, unfortunately. They didn't, uh, yeah. they didn't get as much as they wanted out of it, I don't believe. So we're uh, setting up this last or this next game, I should say, not last, <laughs> and then we'll get right into the pick ban, I'm sure, as well as both these teams matching up once again on Summoner's Rift. So, what do you think is going to be the plan for our Jage Bruns coming into this game? I think they want to first of all ban uh, Sejuani. Yeah. Sejuani, I think, was the the big thing there that kind of uh, gave them the edge. Obviously, I mean, it could just be that this jungler has um, the skills to do that, but we could see that that Sejuani ban might be like the the thing that puts them a little bit further because they were kind of even up until the ganks started getting too out of hand. Yeah, and I think uh, JH Bruns definitely need to consider doing a bit more vision control on objectives. Um, Grand Park did get the first dragon. Granted, they got one back, but they played a little too aggressive yeah. and uh, got themselves nipped in the butt for that. I think they actually should also play by their team comp because they had the Rai, the Yasuo, yeah. and the Sever, and the Zac. So they were of the late game team. They were the late game team. They didn't quite make it there because, uh, you know, issues. <laughs> yeah. But um, we'll see if they can bounce back here. I'm sure they've got some kind of plan. I would like to see some more. Uh, unique picks here, but yeah. now that we've gotten through the whole safe first phase of people not sure what to play, what to open yeah. up with, we might see a bit more of a uh, a bit more like like the Yasuo pick where it's like feast or famine. You you get a lead and you take over the game, something like that. And we're about to be into champ select right now. Yeah, we're about to head into there. Okay, so. First off, banning. Where are we going to see the Sejuani ban? I don't know why Grant Park would ban their own Sejuani, but we'll see. <laughs> you get the Irelia ban again, same as game one. Yep. Uh, definitely a good flex pick for top or mid. Yep. Scary in both. You get the Nar ban. Very oh, smart. Nar was a big play in that. The definitely play. Uh, turned most of the team fights with the ultimates and the, yeah. just being a, a sturdy top lane champion is just good. The Kaisa ban again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, why fix it if it ain't broke? Exactly. <laughs> and then the Sondra ban we're seeing as well from JH Bruns. Let me add a top mids flex picks. Yeah, virtually the same bans across uh, Grand Park Park's board here. No, the no question is, I think they give them the Sijuani. That's a very good point. Um, we could see the Sijuani ban. But we could also see not the Sejuani van and yeah. the Sejuani first pick again. Um, I would say, I would like to see Sejuani ban, but I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a must ban. They denied. do end up banning him though, so we'll see what else is uh, first pickable here. They're probably looking at a bit more 
champions with like like Riven wasn't bad last time. Yeah, I think it might be the Riven. Riven could be a pickup here. Um, I would say a Riven or maybe a Vayne, something sturdy, something OP. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We got a couple more seconds here to decide, and they do go with the Tristana again. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a safe pick. It is a safe pick. You can you can blind pick that and be happy, um, and then you don't have to worry about the ADC bands later on as well. Yeah, well, if, let's say they, let's say they change bands mix and they carry the right now, it opens the door for more bands. For exactly. But we'll see if they think of a Tristana counter. <laughs> they do end up going with the Thresh again. Yeah. Um, not the biggest impact from the Thresh last game, but we'll see maybe there will be some differences here. Uh, they didn't ban Tom Kench, so I'm guessing we'll see Tom Kench again, but um, they might do another different counter pick, like yeah. the Morgana. Um, and we also see the Jarvan. Jarvan's gonna be a very interesting pick here, just because they, they had an engaged jungler last time. Mm -hmm. Will it work this time? Since yeah. Sichuan is banned, and that was like the kind of biggest block. Um, and we do see the Nunu as well, the other champ that was banned last game that was. Uh, oh, never mind. My mistake. It's Tom Kench again. Same bot lane as last time. <laughs> Same bot lane, it looks like. I mean. Again, why fix it if it ain't broke? Um, and then they do pick the the new new next. Okay, another tanky kind of protect the Tristana team we're seeing here so far. The last pick here coming from this phase, and the Vladimir, very, very annoying champion to deal with. Yeah, just because of what he can provide. He can provide so much damage and get to the back lane. And he's tanky, and he can become invulnerable, and yeah. And he can sustain in lane. Exactly. He has no resources, so... Uh, but it can also be a flex pick right now. He can go either top or mid lane. So I, like, I kind of like the Vlad pick yeah. right now. Yeah, Vlad pick is definitely the a good pick to pick at this point where you they uh, haven't you know, decided what to ban yeah. for the top or mid lane, so they don't know, you know. <laughs> and we could actually see the Jarvan maybe even flex to top as well. Yeah, but I think the reason why they picked the Vladimir is because they don't. They don't really need to have a too bad. Yeah, they already see what the AD carry is. So, um, and then that will open up Rampart's bands as well, though. And then the Riven does get banned. I also forgot to mention Silas was also banned, yeah. so that is away from Grand Parks. Mid lane here, so we might not see the exact same. I was gonna say Grant Park's team still looks pretty similar, uh, just Nunu instead yeah. of Sejuani. Very similar champions in terms of what they provide for their team, but a little different playstyles, so could affect them. And then maybe seeing the it's second ADC ban here with Sivir, taking both of those very safe ADCs away. So you kind of forced to play a bit more aggressive. But we could see maybe like a Caitlyn pick or something longer yeah. range. Yeah, Caitlyn's still a safe pick. Oh, and maybe Vayne. Maybe you want to go for like the high risk high reward thing again. Okay, and they yeah. do up for the Vayne. Okay, a Vayne Thresh against Tristana Tom Kench. Maybe, maybe they're gonna go with the same strategy they had, which was just try and go to the late game. Vayne is a pretty strong champion in herself, but I don't know how much she will be able to do against the Tom Kench Tristana. Yeah, I think James Brent is also going to be playing the late game mm -hmm. Yes, Vladimir and Vayne both incredible late game champs. Oh, and we see the Aatrox picked out here for a probably top lane for this yeah. Rampart team. Very interesting champion. He's uh, very duly, and then he's got that big team fighting ult. And then the Cassidy picked out here mid lane. Pretty similar to Silas, I would find. <laughs> yeah, so, Cassidy's like late like super mm -hmm. late game mm -hmm. champ. He just will hop on you and do a lot of damage. Yeah. So yeah, essentially the same team comp from Grand Park, swapping uh, Nar and Aatrox, and then Nunu, Sichuani, and Cast and Silas. Very similar champions all on their own, but uh, definitely still a different roster, as we see the last pick here being probably the solo lane. Oh, and it's a Zed. Very, very cool. So Zed is a strong counter to Cast and He's Kassin's very Q, strong counter. Cast and Q, he protects magic, mm -hmm. but if it's a Zen mid, he has no magic. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be, a, I think the, they're hmm. trying, they're going to try and get the Zed ahead. That's what my plan, I think, my final process here. Mm -hmm. is, and with Zed, he can roam to the bot lane to get the Vayne fed as well. So there's like, kind of like, it looks like JH Bruns has a mixture of like a late game and an early game comp because yeah. they got the, the uh, Jarvan 
and the uh, the Z to do stuff early on while you can still roam around. Yeah. Um, but then later on in the game, Z won't be as effective as a assassin because Tom Kench and um, Nunu you won't be able to kill, Aatrox you won't be able to kill. Um, but then Vladimir and Vayne both providing that late game yeah. power. It's going to be a different game, definitely, and um, we're most likely going to see the Vladimir top and the Zed mid, but uh, they have lane swapped last game, so we could see that first to start off. I, I would say Vladimir would probably be better against Aatrox, because you want the Zed to try and kill the Cassid in her first. Yeah, because once the Cassid gets ahead, like, super ahead, it's going to be so mm -hmm. hard to kill. You want to shut him down right away. That's probably why they opted for the Zed, because that's a very hard counter. Um, still waiting for the spectator delay. It's a, uh, it's part of the whole process. Yep. <laughs> so now, uh, looking at some of these matchups, uh, I would like to see Jarvan go for some early ganks here. Nunu has the early gank potential, but I think Jarvan is a stronger early game gank. He could even go for the invade onto Nunu. Nunu um, will most likely stay healthy, but if he catches yeah. him out in a in a good spot, it could be a good turn of event. Like. Like, if Jarvan goes f for the blue side, he can gank bot lane level 2 right mm -hmm. away, or even the mid lane. And then why wouldn't you want your Vayne fed right away? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of power. A lot more AD on the JH Brun side, so we might see um, full a uh, full armor Nunu and Tom Kench here. Yeah. But you can't count out the Vladimir as well, though, so probably not. But we could see that if Vladimir doesn't make as big of an impact. But the the one thing Grand Park did so well is that they picked the Tom Catch again. Whether they mm -hmm. have the Zed and the Jarvan. Oh yeah. So definitely. They have a, another protection. The the Tom Kench pick will play another big role here, not only against Thresh in the laning phase, but once Zed tries to because Zed's only gonna be able to really target Cassid and or Tristana later on and yeah. Tom Kench just kinda needs to sit on top of both of them and just kind of Yeah make the Zed feel bad. <laughs> so like Tom Kench can also, but the problem is Tom Kench can only eat one person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've got to pick and choose. Um, if you see the Tom Kench use the ability, that's an opportunity to go onto whoever it wasn't used on. Yeah. Nunu is a safe pick, usually. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you can go wrong with Nunu. I think, uh, yeah, like, like I said earlier, they kind of drafted similar. Yeah. Um, the biggest difference, I think, is the Aatrox. I think Aatrox is... A lot more, a lot less of a split pusher than Nar is. Aatrox, you want to be team fighting. You've got those big skill shot cues to. Yeah. Uh, you can get some nice combos on them, um, and they're gonna they're gonna have a nice team comp actually because of the uh, the Nunu as well, providing a a bit more, a bit less uh, engage, but a bit yeah. more team fight. Yeah. We're just about past the spectator delay here, uh, so we can get into the game and see some runes here, because that's the other thing we uh, yeah. want to see. Kassadin is a weird champion for runes. I feel like we might see the fleet footwork Kassadin just to keep him healthy during the laning phase. Yeah. But I have seen like stuff like Airy or Electrocute for a bit more damage, yeah. not necessarily needing it. But you never know, you could get an earlier kill just to push you into the, the later in phases of the game. I like the fleet footwork on Kassadin just mm -hmm. because... And we you, do see it. Y yeah, we you, it gets a sustain, you mm -hmm. wait to late game. Yeah. And we actually could uh, maybe see the Zed starting top here. I know um, Zed is most likely playing mid, but you could see the Zed starting top just to throw them off their game. You know, it's, yeah. it's not a terrible strategy if they, they're confident with uh, the way they want to format this. Also, Grand Park didn't run any Ignite for the Vladimir, so they're going oh, to have to get. Oh, that's very true. They're going to have to get some Grievous wounds for him. I, uh, yeah. I mean, there's not too many. There's only you could get the Executioner's Calling for an attack damage champion, yeah. or the Morella Nomicon, which will. I don't know if that's a good item to rush on Cassidy. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen, or if it's just going to be maybe Aatrox building the Executioner's early. Yeah, just because to, just to stop the Vlad. Yeah. The Vladimir healing will get out of control if you can't control that with yeah. the, the the grievous wounds. Vlad actually went for the um, the phase rush here. It's a very good rune that'll allow yeah. him to to get into their the their close quarters without too much trouble because 
I mean, uh, Grant Park doesn't have as much CC this time around because um, Nar is gone and the the Silas E is gone. Yeah, and they, and the Sejuani. Right, but, Sejuani's gone. Uh, the Nunu does provide most of it. Tom Kench a bit, and then Aatrox has a tiny bit as well. But I mean, the Phase Rush will stop most of their slows, so it's just you're looking at a Nunu uh, knockup. Uh, or an Aatrox knockup, but that wouldn't even really stop them, stop them that much. Yeah, but like with, you have to realize that Cassidy and Tristana have a way to escape from them as well. Mm -hmm, that's very true. So like, let's say Vladimir goes into backline, they can just jump away. Jump away and disengage. Yeah. They do have the disengage comp. So it's going to be a very interesting game here. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, looking at this team, both these teams, I want to say earlier on, Jage Brun should have the advantage. They should be able to make some plays with the Jarvan, um, maybe getting a solo lane kill with the the Vladimir or the Zed. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it could technically go either way here because both those junglers do have the early gank potential. It's just Nunu is a little bit more telegraphed. You can see him yeah. coming from a little bit away. But we are in this game now and uh, almost ready to start the laning phase as they're going to be going for their little early shenanigans here to start things off. So, Kassin went for the Corrupting Potion, as usual. Nothing too crazy there. Yeah. The game was paused again. I think uh, there was just a little bit of delay. minor delay here, yeah. but it should be back up in a moment. It looks like J.H. Brunch is actually going to go for a gank here. Like early gank, because they have a five-man gank coming down to the bot lane. Mm hmm They might be doing a cheese strat, you're right. Yeah. Okay. But the Tom Kench will see them. So they, Tom Kench so does spot them, so they're not going to get too much. They're still going to press this, though. Looks like they just want to get some wards down in the jungle, perhaps. Aatrox is actually leaking over as well to maybe ward their red buff. Yeah. Uh, not too much happening from that. Um, they didn't even really drop a ward, they were just kind of scouting it out. A little bit of a freeze here, we should be good though. Uh, Cassidy and any trucks are both chilling in this top side, and they actually still opt to stay in that tri bush. Um, I guess they thought that Tom Kench didn't ward it, which they are right, Tom yeah. Kench didn't. Um, it's kind of a bit more shadow. risky, but I mean, I guess they don't really have much to worry about. There's... Die in dark. Again, not much happening earlier on. It looks like they might actually go for some kind of steal onto this other red buff here. Yeah, but the Jarvan is going to be spotted. The Jarvan is spotted. Um, if that's going to be that great for him. As Thresh goes for a hook, it doesn't hit anyone. And they're actually starting this. They're, the, they're st stealing the Nunu's red buff, or at least yeah. trying to a little bit. That's going to be hard to steal from a Nunu because he does have his Q and his Smite. Yeah. But they do get the reset, though. That will hurt a little bit, um, make him here a little bit slower. But we shouldn't have too much problems there. And then the Vladimir does end up starting top, like we kind of thought. <laughs> And yeah, that lane should be should be a little fun. Aatrox gets a nice trade on him, actually. But Vladimir can trade right back. And actually, Kassadin is getting a little bit more harass on the Zed than I thought. So we should be seeing a lot more early aggression from both sides, I believe, because they're both going to be uh, revved up from last game. Rip last game was just the testing the waters yeah. game. So this was interesting. Jarvan went for the Scuttle rather than the debuff, just because Scuttle doesn't do any damage to them. So it was a safe play. It was a risky play as well. Mm -hmm. Ball lane is still looking like that snooze fest we thought it would be. But uh, at least uh, we might be seeing some action soon after the junglers finish up their first little clear. Aatrox has been pretty aggressive this laning phase so far. He's been going for those Qs onto the... Uh, the Vladimir and Zed is also comboing the Kassin for a bit of health as well, so besides having their aggressive moments here, it's not much is happening. There's just uh, the standard game so far. A little bit uh, wary. Aatrox actually gets a nice combo off there and 
Doesn't get much off of it aside from getting Vladimir's health, which he can regain pretty quickly. Nunu is going for a little bit of evade. Jarvan oh, was about to go check him out, but he didn't end up doing that, so he's uh, checking out his wolves instead. <laughs> Nunu is actually spotting Jarvan's red, which Jarvan tried to take Nunu's, so why not take his back? Yeah, so this is going to put Jarvan way, way behind. Uh-huh. Jarvan is actually coming up soon here, though. He l notices that his uh, chickens are gone. He's just taking the small one there while Nunu's right there taking it. Oh, and he just snags it away right under Jarvan's nose. Jarvan didn't even know he was there, probably. Yeah. Oh, and there's a little fight in the bot lane as well. There's a fight top lane as well. As a Ooh, Aatrox actually gets a really good W onto the Vladimir. Pulled him back, and Vladimir had to flash away. And Vladimir is looking to back off now. He does have teleport. Don't know if he'll use it yet. Uh, but we should should see some. Yeah. Jarvan took a lot of damage there as well, as well as casting and backing here. Um, everyone resetting their gold here. Buying some items. Nothing too crazy for the first item. Yeah. We're looking at a standard really game maybe be even a bit more cautious this game from both teams as they are trying to trying to find something both teams trying to find some kind of pick here Aatrox has been doing well so far up top Nunu is trying to go for a gank in the bot lane here yeah Nunu is actually in a great position here do get the flash off of the Tom Kench and that was uh, a nice flash as well from Sorry, I should say Thresh Flash and a nice flash from Tom Kench to get the, the, the Devourer onto him. And then First Blood going over to Tristana, which is a good champion to have that on. Yeah. It was a very good game from the, the unit there. Because he didn't have any more than the jump in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he came in full speed. Um, he was, wasn't was even really needed. No. Like... <laughs> They kind of just scared him, but Jarvan is top here. Um, maybe looking for a kill onto this Aatrox. Aatrox is, doesn't have his ult yet. He gets knocked up by the Jarvan. Uh, Vladimir, oh, Vladimir taking maybe a little bit too much damage there as he's forced to back off, and they don't actually get the kill onto the Aatrox there like they thought they wanted. Oh, Jarvan goes back in, though, and this is really grim for Aatrox. He's very low. Jarvan tries to flash out him once more for the finish off, but it didn't actually trying to go didn't finish him off. Kastin is actually teleporting in there as well. Uh, not to avail though, and then it looks like Grand Park's actually taking this dragon. Nunu, Nunu can do that. <laughs> Nunu can like just maxing his Q first. Easy dragon level four. Yeah. And yeah, so far Grand Park uh, a bit more, a bit more aggressive on the objectives and the kills in the laning phase. They've been doing well for themselves. So Zeb build the hex trigger first, which is very interesting. Because mm -hmm. Kazan doesn't really do much damage early game. So mm -hmm. I was hoping he probably went for a little bit more damage as well. I'm not sure if that was the right call, because he's going to be needing to be aggressive for his team here. Yeah. Um, and maybe picking up some kills to kind of support that. Thresh trying to go for an engage onto Tristana. She hops away. Not much to be said there. Nothing too much. Yeah. Uh, just trading back and forth. That's what this. Um, both teams have a lot of late game carries, so I mean that's just to be expected at this point. No one's really going to be at their prime yet until we get a bit more items, a bit more kills going. But um, yeah, Grand Park is still showing that they're a bit more better of that objective control. As Nunu is actually just denying Jarvan a lot of CS. Their Jarvan isn't even level six yet. Nope. Nunu is taking his red buff that we should get him level 6. Oh, not quite actually, never mind. Looks like Jarvan's trying to go for another Jarvan gank. is going for a gank top again. He's just checking if the wards are there. He doesn't actually go in yet because he sees Aatrox is level 7. And, oh, and there's a fight in the mid lane right now? There is a fight in the mid lane. Uh, Nunu actually catches the, the Zed out, but Zed turns onto the, the Kassadin and gets the kill, but Nunu flash halt to finish yeah. him off. Uh, great play great by play. both sides. Zed evening it up uh, by getting the kill onto the Kassadin. It's very nice for him. And then Nunu finishing off the Zed. Nunu's also fighting this Jarvan here. Jarvan is actually not doing so hot because of that red buff. He's not looking like he's going to be good, but he does EQ away. 
very interesting right now. Yeah, so far, uh, these just small trades, just kind of like how last game panned out. Uh, they're just trying to get these little ganks to get people ahead. Um, we get the we get a little bit more gold onto Tristana earlier on, though, so maybe we could see a bit more do bot lane dominance. But nothing so far. They're actually staying pretty even in CS bot lane. Um, Jar or sorry, I should say, Vladimir is the only one who's hurting a lot with CS because Aatrox has been harassing a lot. A new, a new gank. Bane actually doesn't grab the thing right away. The lantern, I should say, not the thing. But they, they do uh, get away unscathed. Grand Park did a lane swap right now, so now we have Aatrox mid and the cast Zed the swapped there. I'm not sure if that was the one you wanted to do. Aatrox is ulting here. Doesn't look like uh, Zed's gonna be too happy about that one as he ends up going down to Aatrox as well. No, it's gonna like, mess up Zed a bit just because he built magic resist where Aatrox mm -hmm. is in magic. Yeah, resist. absolutely. That was, again, like we said, a mistake from uh, Zed. Maybe not the best one. Probably didn't want the magic resist that bad early on. You needed a bit more kill threat, and then they, the uh, Jage Bruns, or sorry, Grand Park capitalize on that and send the Aatrox yep. middle lane. He gets himself a nice kill. Um, he was already doing pretty well for himself before, but now he's being even better. Yep. We're finally starting to see a bit more ults from the uh, supports and the junglers here, so we get a bit more uh, maybe team fighting going on. There's a little bit more. Counter jungling being done from Grand Park. They're trying to take away all of Jarvan's CS so that he's virtually starved of gold. Yeah, what like Jarvan gonna be is gonna be really behind mm -hmm. compared to the, the Nunu. He already is a little bit. He's a full level behind Nunu because Nunu did get the the red buff early yeah. and then the dragons. But uh, not too much so far happening. People are kind of resetting their lanes right now. Oh, and Thresh just blew a splash. We're going back into lane. Okay. Thresh. No, gonna be using that flash defensive or aggressively. I like what uh, Grand Park is doing right now. Denying the Zed kills. Yeah, the Zed was the one they wanted to get the kills early on so that they could snowball the game, but... But with the lane swap, it's the lane be, swap. Yeah, I think that's what really messed them up about. Bit. Nunu's heading bot again, maybe looking for a dive. The dragon is. The dragon spawned. just spawned. Jarvan is topside, so he's nowhere near that. And Nunu can melt this thing a little faster than normal because he has the ability to do a lot of true damage to that dragon. Yeah. Jarvan. Grand Park's yeah. playing the objective of the game as well, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely paying off for them as they looking to finish out the second dragon of the game for them, and that's an infernal dragon, so that's gonna give them plenty of damage. Tom Kench actually catches the Thresh out of position there. Eats him, spits him out right for their Tristana. Tristana picks herself up a second kill. She's starting to build a bounty for herself now. Yeah. And then all in all, this is looking more towards Grand Park again, um, this game. A bit more early on than we didn't see this much dominance uh, early on last game. It, yeah. was, it was a bit panned out as Jarvan actually might go for a gank bot lane here. Uh, Thresh isn't there as well, but Zed is also catching up the Kassanen, uh, which there is an Aatrox there as well. But Jarvan goes in, uh, doesn't find much, as there is no follow-up from the Thresh, unfortunately. Yeah. But we have those have forgot about to mention that Tristana melts towers. Mm -hmm. She has the ability to use her abilities onto those towers. Zed and Aatrox are having a little tussle here. Aatrox does actually get the kill onto the Zed as he flashes into the tower and then uses his ulti passive to revive himself so he doesn't actually get that hurt. Uh, Vayne actually went for an all in there and actually almost killed him. And Jarvan, Jarvan takes one too many tower hits. Yeah. Tom Kench picks up a kill. And you're gonna teleport from Kassadin, trying to Ooh, Kassadin. Yeah. And to no avail. To no avail, but um, still Grant Park came out with the win there as they yeah. they took out Zed in the mid lane, they got Jarvan bot, and they didn't lose anyone. So is Tristana is so ahead now? You already finished her infinity edge and the Berserker's Greaves. Tristana is very a very scary person, especially yeah. when you have the Tom Pench just to kinda sit on ya. Aatrox also has a 200 gold bounty on his head. Yeah. Um, 
if uh, J JH Bruns could find a pick here. That would be their best case scenario to bring this back in this game, especially on one of those yeah. uh, ones with the bounty. Maybe on the Aatrox if he's in the side lane, maybe send the a couple guys after him, but we should see. Uh, Jarvin's trying his best here to get into the game, but he's been denied a lot, unfortunately. And it's not not really his fault, it's the fact that they they focused him, but you gotta adapt to those situations. There's a gank going on top lane here. Looks like they're trying to catch the Vladimir out, but he's actually doing not too, not too bad for himself, because Jarvin actually jumps in there, and there is a Zed as well. They get a lot of ulties. Sorry, I'm sorry. A lot of uh, help from Grant Park. Aatrox picks up the first kill, and it doesn't look like Jarvin's gonna make it out either. That's a second kill over to uh, Grant Park, and they're just gonna dive the Zed as they don't see a point in not diving the Zed. Yeah. They get the kill. Grant Park has like so much teleport going on with him <laughs> that Tom Kench can. Like, she's on yeah. ahead. She can just leave him be and farm up. Tom Kench can use the ultimate to just hop around the map, make some plays. They're actually looking to get the Void Herald here as well. And the bot tower is going to go down soon. Here. Very soon, yeah. And that would be the first tower, yes. And uh, Void Herald does die here. Tristana is actually engaging onto this vein. Not quite finding... Oh, oh, just about finish her off with the ultimate ability there. Does find a way to get out of their life. Jarvan actually comes in here behind Tom Kench. Tom Kench is not looking too hot. He still has his E ability, but uh, Jarvan alts in there, maybe trapping himself into Lion's Cage there as Tristana just kind of unleashes on both of them. Yeah, Tristana is way too ahead right way now. Way too ahead. You you needed a bit more help uh, from, I believe, uh, the support or something there. So, Grand Park is. Still playing into their team comp really well. Grand Park um, knows how to get those objectives early on, and they know how to snowball themselves into a game where they can... Um, they really made this game their own when they, they see someone building something, they swap. When they see an objective up, they go to it, and they make sure they have everything they need for it. Yeah, just because now they're... Like, I think the, the jungler, like, denying the drive in the farm, pretty much incremented this lead. Absolutely. They're about like, almost like 8k colder. There's a bit of a fight going on as well. Zed is get, getting caught out. Uh, Aatrox does ult and he looks to just dive the Zed because he doesn't care. He might get something here, but the Zed actually does manage to fall. Yeah. Not as much from the Zed this game as I had thought, but uh, that happens when build magic resist early and then you get lane swapped on. Yeah, and it's also, not the best scenario, hey? Yeah, since now they have the mid and the bottom lane towers open, it's like they can keep like, it's light up for Grand Park, because they have, they have so many, they can just keep putting down wars and catching them out. It's very hard for them. Well, one team fight can change everything. Making good use of that Void Herald there to get some turrets as well. As they make the, their way to their third dragon, which is an Earth Dragon. Very good objective control, which they don't really need too much help with as they are showing their superior in that. We can't go wrong with one dragon. Yeah, absolutely. And Jage Friends um, picking their moment to shine at this point as they try to, go for trying to find some here. And did you try and gank this? Uh, Vladimir, but he's pretty hard to gank when he can just turn invulnerable yeah. like that. So nothing there. Top lane turret is pretty low for the JH Brun side, and it looks like it's gonna go down to minions maybe. Uh, Aatrox is just gonna finish it off. <laughs> yeah. Red team's turret has been destroyed. Okay. Now all the outer turrets are gone for GH Bruns, which makes it so they have to play a bit more defense. They have to ward defensively too, that means. They have to place their wards in the spots where they could be caught out, uh, so they can make their make their lives a bit more valuable to themselves. <laughs> yeah. Both teams looking to push with the mid lanes here just to get a bit more opportunity to, to ward. 
Nunu Giant. is so hard to dodge with that huge snowball vein, not finding anything to save her as she does end up going down. And Nunu does a flash alt there, not the best use of that engage, but I mean it is effective because you do get people uh, trying to to get away from it. And Zed is maybe in a little too deep as Aatrox looks to dunk onto him, and Aatrox is actually the one up very too deep as he's an enemy base here with virtually no escape, but he does ulti here, he's getting a little help from his own team, and they're actually cleaning up a bit here, Tristana ulting the Vladimir away, you don't want him too close, and they actually do manage to jump onto the Jarvan as well and grab a double kill for Kassadin. Vladimir tries to flash in, doesn't really get much damage down, Tom Kench was kind of in the way. And then Grandpark does take that turret. Aatrox is just harassing him while they get the inhibitor. I don't know if Aatrox will be, be okay there. He does flash away though. So probably looking to be safe here. We could see maybe some chase from GH Brunts as they just opt against that and go for the clearing the minions as well. They lick their wounds. Well, thank you to LRSD TV for hosting the first ever Manitoba High School Esports Championships for League of Legends. Yeah, it's comprised of 13 teams. Uh, we'll go over those teams in a bit, but that's quite a bit. Then uh, this is a brand new league. This is the first ever championship. we uh, glad to be here. This has been a blast so far. Yep. Definitely, uh, High definitely enjoying this. Yeah. High pace action. Yeah, absolutely. So, JH Bruns to find some more kills here, I think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They've only got one for them so far, and it's on the the Zed. Also, Grand Park has a five turret advantage. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty grim when you're down 10k gold, but I mean you're down, but you're not out yet. So yep. you do can you can get back into it. You just gotta pick and choose the right moments. And they're doing their best to clear the minions here, make sure that they don't get any minions close to their base here. As Grand Park are just setting up a. a Vision and control, looking for the picks that they could possibly have as each friends try to fight back with their own means. Natrox, maybe a little duel with Vayne here. Doesn't actually get too much out of it as he is just kind of drawing attention. You have the Jarvan engaging onto the Kassadin here. Zed didn't quite make his combo vowed there, and then Tom Kench was also there to just. Uh, Eat for, him up. They're going for the Baron infection right now. Yeah, Baron is also, uh, I said, just should say Aatrox is also bot lane split pushing as well, so even if this goes south, there is the opportunity for... Jace Brun's actually almost stealed that Baron, but the Tristana ult just uh, pushed the Jarvan out of the pit. And you, the Nunu is already there as well. But Vayne may be cleaning up here, so there's also a fight going down in the base as well. Aatrox and Zed. Yeah. And then Vayne didn't quite find the kill she wanted as well, so that's going to be a clean ace for Grand Park, and we might be looking at the end of the game here. German is up in five seconds, um, but they're picking up an inhibitor. They might be picking up a bit more here. Yeah, the death timers are too long for now. They're about like 20 seconds. They might pick up one Nexus turret and then back off here, I would say. Oh, maybe they're going for more gears. Aatrox is actually teleporting back into the, their base. And they actually get the the other in, uh, Nexus turret and they're trying, and they're right very trying, very trying to edit and Jace Friends doing their best to try and stop that, but they can't do anything because they're just too far behind. And that's game two to Grand Park. Yeah, and Grand Park are the champions. Uh, we're, we're only going to game two. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> Well done by Grant Park there. Um, yeah. They they found their dominance in game one yeah. um, a bit later on in the game than this one, and they they pushed for it and they they fought for that one. This yeah. one was a bit more of a domination for them. They just played everything very clean. They um, got the objectives. They got all of the the vision control. They denied the gold from Jarvan, which was a big thing. Yeah. Jarvan couldn't do any ganks uh, to get his team ahead. And yeah, all in all, well played by Grand Park. Well played by JH Bruns though too. Yeah. They did show that they have what it takes to become a good team. It's just um, they they fell behind with the objectives. I find mostly. Yeah, and also that the 
I think the big play was the Aatrox main lane swap. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was that was a very big part of it because Zed did opt for the the magic resist early on. Yeah, which it can work. It's just that like Cassidy doesn't like if you're against like a different champion, maybe Cass mm -hmm. maybe like a mage. Yeah, Cassidy. But... Cassidy is a very hard like doesn't do much damage early on. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that does it for us here. Yep. Yeah, it was a blast. Uh, like I said, this was the uh, the first ever Manitoba High School League of Legends Championship. Yep. And we look forward to hearing from you again. So, Signing off, Logan and Mark. Have a good day, guys. You too.